in detail. Our American partners and us are worried over the situation. We presented our position, which is well known, regarding uh, the things happening in Ukraine, the reasons for these events, and what should be done by the international community in order to help start inclusive national dialogue in order to overcome the deep, deep division in Ukrainian society and constitutional reform with that we strongly believe should take into account the interests of all the parts of Ukraine. We also expressed our deep concern over the fact that necessary measures are not being taken to ensure law and order. Effective measures are not being taken to stop illegal activities by radicals who continue to stage provocations, including armed provocations, violent provocations, and they increasingly attempt to influence uh, the processes taking place in Ukraine. We pointed out that uh, quite obviously the provisions of the February 21st agreement are not being implemented, such as uh, surrendering weapons and clearing barricades on the streets. And our U.S. partners assured us that they also think these matters need to be taken care of. They also agree with us that the constitutional reform Form that would help overcome the division in Ukrainian society is very important. At the same time, as regards practical steps that can be taken by Ukraine's foreign partners, we don't have a common vision of the situation. Our differences remain, but of course this conversation was helpful in order to understand better uh, how well we understand each other in this situation in the wide context of the different issues in Russia-US relations. And from this point of view, I would say this uh, discussion was helpful. We also talked about Crimea and we reiterated our position which has been presented by the Russian president that will respect the choice that the people of Crimea will make in the referendum on March 15th. I am ready to take uh, questions now. We'll have two questions from both sides. Do we have only two sides here? Okay, so international media are one side and then Russian press is the other side. Okay. Interfax News Agency. Uh, does Russia agree to set up a contact group with uh, the U.S. and European countries to deploy a mission to Ukraine? You know, I've had an op a chance to comment on this issue. A contact group in the way as it is offered by our Western partners at the moment uh, thinks that uh, the, the goal should be to enhance uh, direct dialogue between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. And we think this is a quid pro quo because uh, the Russian Federation was not the reason for this crisis. We have warned repeatedly our Western partners that they should not confront with this um, uh, wrong choice, as they did when they prepared for this uh, agree association agreement with the EU when President Yanukovych announced his decision to postpone this procedure. You know how this entire process started and what we said, how we warned against encouraging anti-constitutional activities especially relying on illegal paramilitary groups. So if the international community is responsible about the future of the Ukrainian nation, they should strongly encourage Ukraine to start the process of the constitutional reform. The Supreme Rider is well able to initiate such a process, inviting all the regions to the dialogue and uh, making sure that they all 
take equal participation in this process. By the way, we have a proposal we submitted it a, a week ago to our Western partners. Maybe later we can uh, publish this proposal, our vision of how international support can be provided for this process. But the most important thing is we don't need an international structure to look at Russian-Ukrainian relations. We <laughs> These relations are still intact, of course, after um, what ha uh, these events in Kyiv, after the legitimate president in Kyiv was ousted, we had certain difficulties, but the Russian President Putin instructed the Russian government to continue working with their colleagues <coughs> in the current Ukrainian government, the Ministry of Economics, uh, the Ministry of Energy, and uh, contacts between our foreign ministers also continued. So all the current issues that are our Ukrainian colleagues want to discuss, they can discuss with us directly. And uh, actually, uh, I would like to mention the fact that Ukraine suggested convening a CIS meeting. Ukraine is currently uh, presiding over CIS meetings, and they suggested having this meeting in Kyiv in just a few days. We said that according to the CIS procedure, initially we need a meeting at the level of deputy foreign ministers, and it should take place in Minsk as the headquarters of the CIS, but Ukraine declined this proposal, so it's not like we dodge um, away from dialogue. And what the international community should do is it should encourage all Ukrainians to participate in this dialogue on the constitutional reform with the understanding that procrastination and uh, encouraging the Ukrainian leadership to continue advancing in the direction they were advancing. This is what caused uh, the Crimean leadership to hold a referendum, and we have a uh, promise to respect the outcome of this referendum. Russian military forces being made ready to enter eastern Ukraine. We've seen a significant build-up of their forces on the borders, and your ministry this morning made clear that it was ready to act to take citizens of eastern Ukraine under uh, Russian protection. Uh, in light of events uh, in Donetsk last night. What happened in Donetsk, uh, we have already commented on that. Our, our foreign ministry has commented on that. This text should be available to you. And uh, what happened is outrageous. Armed people, militants, arrived in Donetsk from other regions and attacked the participants of a peaceful rally uh, demonstrating against Kiev authorities. Uh, the Russian Federation does not have any plans to invade eastern or southern Ukraine. Uh, we strongly believe that the right of Russian people, Hungarian people, Bulgarian people and the Ukrainians themselves should be protected and secured. And uh, the fact that we don't have any serious violations in Crimea at this point is because additional measures were taken and self-defense brigades were intent on preventing what happened on Maidan to happen in Crimea. Actually, uh, there is still this tent camp uh, on Maidan, on the Independence Square in the center of a European capital. And I can assure you that we have no plan not to be transparent in what we do. Uh, let me give you an example. Just a few days ago, Ukraine, as part of the Open Sky Agreement, uh, requested for an emergency flyover on Russian territory where we had our maneuvers, and immediately we agreed to this request, and it was granted. Mr. Lavrov, why do certain Western countries recognize the right to self-determination like in Kosovo and at the same time they don't 
uh, grant the same right to the people of Crimea. What do your Western partners respond to this? Well, they say it should be dealt on a case-by-case -case basis. That's all they say, basically. Well, if Kosovo is a special case, then Crimea is also a special case. It's just equally special. Let's take two more questions. What is your view on the, uh, the prospect of sanctions, maybe even trade sanctions against Russia? State Secretary Kerry made no threats. Uh, regarding Russia. Uh, as regards the prospect of sanctions, we live in... Uh, we, we know uh, what uh, Washington is considering, what Europe is considering. We have plenty of media reporting on that. And I can assure you that our partners realize that sanctions is a counterproductive uh, instrument. And if this decision is made in Western capitals, this is the decision they make. But this will definitely not help our mutual interests, uh, the interests of business, the interests of developing our cooperation. This is very obvious. You know, in politics it makes no sense to speculate uh, there are no ifs in politics. No what ifs. As regards the referendum that will take place in Crimea this Sunday, uh, President Putin has already said that we will respect the choice that the Ukrainian people, actually peoples, because there are several ethnic groups in Crimea, the choice that they will make. And uh, once we have the results of this referendum, we will announce what we think about it. Uh, the Crimean parliament has already passed a declaration uh, declaring the independence of Crimea and expressed their hope that uh, the people of Crimea will confirm this decision at the referendum. It makes no point to speculate at this point because we just have to wait and see. Uh, regarding what our Western partner said, that this referendum will not be recognized, like I said earlier, people are entitled to the right to self-determination. This is uh, a provision in the UN Charter, and we have plenty of cases where people use this right to self-determination, including in modern history. Let me give you one example. Everybody talks about uh, Kosovo. There is also another nation, uh, Comoro Islands. And uh, in uh, l last century, they had a referendum on the matter of independence from France. And one of the islands was against that. And based on that, France insisted on uh, a recount of votes to make sure that they don't count the entire number of the people, but they count votes on each island separately. And based on that, the, there is this island called Mayotta. This island is still part of France, first as a colony, as a colonial territory, and later it was included in the French Republic as part of some department. What was that? Annexation or self-determination? I don't know. The UN and the African Union did not recognize the decision but France, but the European Union lives with it perfectly well. And finally, as regards the response by our Western partners, once again, it's uh, their decision, it's up to them. The Russian president is in close contact with President Obama, with Chancellor Merkel, with Prime Minister Cameron, with President Hollande, with other leaders of Western countries, and not just Western countries, with the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, with uh, the 
President of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, and in my telephone conversations, in my regular meetings with my colleagues, I make no secret of our position. We're not hiding, we're not dodging their questions. What counts is that we have an honest and fair discussion of all these issues. I cannot answer this question. We uh, never, uh, we never shirk from uh, discussing things along diplomatic channels. If our partners are not willing to do that, we cannot force them. But I hope, and uh, at least in our private personal conversations, we see that they have this understanding that they realize that this is truly a situation that cannot be considered in isolation, outside the context of history, uh, and whether there are some precedents in uh, history or not, and by the way, there are precedents. Everybody realizes, I can assure you, everybody realizes how important Crimea is to Russia, what Crimea means to Russians. It means much more than Comoro Islands for France or Falkland Islands for Great Britain. Thank you.